Okay, so you finally have your first big job. You've booked the studio, you've booked the lights, and the very first thing you might think about doing is ramping everything up to 100. However, you may find that your image is flat as a result. See, as beginners, you may often gloss over the notion of controlling light or even taking it away. Today, we're gonna to have a look at how using a flag to create negative fill is a powerful way to take away light and create more contrast to enhance the mood of your shot. Let's explore how. So, absorbing light. It's done with one of these. This is a flag and they are used to block, shape and absorb light from your subject. And if you're on a budget, you don't even have to use the specific tool. Just a black piece of fabric that absorbs light will do uh, your scene justice. So with that covered, let's have a look at how a flag is used. Okay, so this is our scene. A young woman walks through the forest lost and worried. She pulls out her phone, no signal. Now this is our scene with ambient daylight and you know, it's fairly decent, it's okay. However, like everything, it can be improved. Initially, under budget terms, we could place a bounce material on the darker side of our subject's face in order to bring out the shadows. Because we're bouncing light into the darker area of her face, this would be a full light. Now this makes the shot look more pleasing and certainly brightens the subject's face. However, for our scene, the tone is to be moody and somewhat menacing and using bounce light, we're not getting that feeling. This is where using the flag can come into place. The bounce creates a fill light. It bounces the ambient light back to our subject. The flag will do the opposite. It not only blocks the surrounding ambient light, but will also absorb the directional daylight. And as a result, will darken our subject's face, which will introduce contrast. Now this looks like a much better shot. The contrast helps add some depth to the subject's face. Instead of it being flat from the ambient light, are overly bright from the bounce light. Let's compare the fill and the negative fill. We can see that there are two completely different types of feelings from this shot. The shot with additional contrast feels very moody and certainly enhances the tone we're looking for. Now there is no magic about using negative fill. However, typically you're gonna to wanna to make sure to use negative fill on the side of the face which is already darkest, so the side which is away from the light. And I would also suggest implementing the far side key which is where you position the camera on the side of the subject's face, which is darkest. Okay, so usually you're gonna get the better results with negative fill when using it in an exterior circumstance in order to create contrast where it's not typically found. And we've got really good results from today for one reason in particular, because it's overcast. And when it's overcast, it's gonna produce a lot of ambient daylight, which is diffused. Now we can't control the weather, and when it's sunny and there's a lot of harsh light with hard shadows, it can be a little bit more challenging in creating convincing negative fill, but you can still do so with a specific type of flag called the floppy flag. So this is a floppy flag and it's called a floppy flag because it has a detachable piece of fabric, which comes down from the side, which now not only blocks light from the top, but also from the side. And using this is where we can create some nice cinematic contrast. All right, guys, so we're gonna set the scene. Our character, he needs money, uh, and there's a plan to get some money to rob some bad people, but it doesn't go to plan. We're at this nice, moody, abandoned uh, location, and he's waiting to hear the good news. It doesn't come through. Now, it's winter, it's very cold, um, it's the midday sun, it's not as harsh as the summer midday sun, and uh, the light on our subject, you know, it's not overly harsh, it's not too contrasty as if it was the middle of July. It's somewhat permissible, and I think maybe on an indie level, perhaps with some bounce somewhere, this could work. However, I do think it's not as pleasing as we could make it. So what I'm gonna do is take my flag, obviously make sure that it's sandbagged up because you don't want any incidents, and bring it over to the directionality of our subject and bringing him into the shadows. Okay, so now I've put the flag in place. Of course, we do have the shadow fall off on his stomach from the stand, but because we're shooting on a nice uh, 85 millimeter telephoto lens, we don't need to worry about that at this point in time. Now, we've blocked the midday sun. It is winter sunlight, it's not too harsh. However, it doesn't promote the tone that we're going for of our character receiving some negative news, but we can take things a step further and that is by using the floppy flag in order to absorb the light and create that cinematic contrast on his left side. 
So I'm just gonna get the flag down, bring it slightly closer. Okay, so now we've got the flag in place and we can see that there's a lot more contrast, a lot more tonality to our subject's face and it adds to the atmosphere of the scene that we're trying to create. So we haven't used any additional lights, we haven't bought any expensive LEDs to kind of get this look. All we're using is a relatively inexpensive floppy flag in order to create this. So to conclude for this example, a floppy flag performs two of the flag's core duties, but at the same time, instead of individually, it not only blocks the directional light, but also helps absorb the ambient light in order to add contrast to our subject. If we compare the three shots, you will see a defined difference between them, but only a slight difference. However, it's these incremental differences that will help sell the tone of your scene and also set aside your cinematography from those who are just using ambient light. Okay guys, so in our first two examples, we were at exterior locations where I typically think you're gonna get some of the best uses from employing the negative fill method. Now we've moved to an interior location and we're gonna have a look at how we can use the same techniques displayed in the previous example, but on a basis where there's absolutely no film lighting to accommodate for the interior location. So let's have a look at how we're gonna do this. Okay, so when filming without any additional film lighting, this realistically is the best area that you wanna be at, right next to an open window. Now, it's not actually quite too harsh outside. There's a lot of clouds, so we're getting some nice diffused light coming in through the window. However, it still looks a little bit plain. So all we're gonna do is introduce some negative fill to this side of the actor's face. And remember, as I talked about in one of the previous examples, you want to position the negative fill for best use with a far side key. So if our actor turns ever so slightly and faces just towards the wall, the light is coming in and hitting the left side of the actor's face. This side from the interior location is naturally darker. So this is the side that we're gonna to want to add more contrast to with a flag. Of all the aspects of filmmaking, using a flag might be the simplest. Again, you simply position the black absorbent material on the darker side of the subject, and that in turn will deflect and absorb the ambient light around them. Quite like our other two examples, what you will often notice with negative fill is that the difference is minimal, yet the slightest addition of contrast adds so much beauty to the shot. Okay guys, I've been Lewis with Fedibo, and I hope today that you've learned it's not always about acquiring more lights in order to create a better image, and in fact, the reduction of light dare I say it, may help you craft a more cinematic look. Until next time.